stoning wide bodies. Why is it wrong? Why is it wrong to clone a wide body AMG car? Here's a topic that's going to spark some controversy. I am here today to talk about the ridiculousness of cloning AMG cars. And of course, all the stupid nonsense that goes with it. I mean, we're seeing a lot of guys now showing some interest in putting M156 engines in a W126 and then maybe putting um, some wide wheel arches on the back and let's just start with the nice 126 coupe and mutilate it, you know, I don't know. So I take it most of the people that are watching this video are probably sympathetic to preserving these cars. And um, I'm gonna talk about why it's okay to have a period AMG that was done then and why it is stupid to do it now. So let's begin. In the 1980s, in the early 1990s, AMG Germany, and to an even greater extent, it seems, AMG in Japan, which was nothing but a group of affiliated guys who were running shops, who were licensed to use the AMG name, were building wide-body SECs, wide-body 300 CEs, and even wide-body 107s. They put a wide body on anything, really. I mean, if you brought them a 230E, they'd probably put a wide body on it. I don't know if I like all of this stuff. Like, I don't know if I'd want a period AMG wide body because the quality is so variable. But for what it is, it was done in the period when the car was new, which was 30 years ago. So now we have guys that are like, oh, I'll build you a wide body. Just bring me a perfect SEC. Does it have the same value, though? I would say no, and I'd say actually, despite the amount, putting man hours into something, taking a perfect car and then adding stuff to it does not necessarily equal the real thing. Why is it not the real thing? Well, first of all, because you're not licensed to use the AMG name. It doesn't have that AMG part number on it where Hans Werner Alfresh said, okay, yeah, I'll license your shop to do this. We're, one thing we're starting to learn, by the way, is as period AMG cars become more popular and they get liberated from Japan or the Middle East, uh, the build quality was highly variable. So some of these modern wide bodies are probably better built, maybe, I don't know, given what I see with body shops, maybe not, bit better built than the cars in the period because they weren't slapped together for some Shah in the Emirates. But it kind of gives the car a romantic notion that it was built by the people who were involved in the beginning. And that's, that's really the important thing. That's what differentiates a replica from the real thing. So where do replica AMG cars fall in terms of the value spectrum? I can promise you that the first one or two buyers will pay more for the car and then it will start to undergo a steady decline as the work unravels, as the car gets miles on it, as the Apple uses, loses a little bit of its shine you as the purchaser of one of these cars or the person who has it built is going to pay the most money for it. Now, if it's the real thing and the documentation is on the car or built into the car, like a real AMG wide body, if one can say there is such a thing, you know, especially if it was built outside of a Falterbach, then the documentation of, of that car being built in the period does help. Now, I'm still predicting this, that Japanese built wide body cars may, may see a divergence in values. They're not going to be cheap. They're not going to be like $100,000 cars. But I think that, that real, a Falterbach built AMG wide bodies are going to do this. One of the big problems though with this market is that stock perfect well-preserved secs are underappreciated and you know this comes from people kicking tires and wondering whether they should have one basically the cars are are just too expensive for those who really can't afford it unless they get a bad one and then they're too inexpensive for people who are really serious about collectible cars for them to fall on the radar Nobody appreciates the SEC, and guess it happens when not enough people appreciate a car. One, nobody restores them. 
two really great examples don't bring the money they should have. The SEC should be like a $60,000 car, like a really nice clean SEC 60, 70 grand. Then that would keep people who want to buy one to modify it out, keeps you out because you are a loser with a dumb idea, keeps you out of the, you know, keeps you out of the, out of the, out of the game. Because you're not going to be like, oh man, 60 grand. I can't take this $60,000 car, invest 30,000 into it and then make a hundred K. You know, that's not enough of a profit margin. No, these guys are going out and buying these perfect cars, like 25, 30 K putting what they claim is a bunch of hours into it. Really, you and I both know it's not because they're slapping them together. They're putting like 15, 20 grand into the build and in parts and maybe like another 10 in labor. And they're building this thing that looks like an AMG wide body and they're making $150,000 on it. Just remember if you bought one of these that you paid too much. But um, what you end up with is a super high profit margin because somebody can buy something that is undervalued that is really a great car and turn it into something that is still a good car mechanically but yields them a stupid high profit margin. Because people see it and they're like, oh, it's a wide body. Wide body equals money. I don't know. I mean, imagine, imagine the uh, possibilities if people actually started restoring SECs. I remember my friend Tim sold a red, Signal Red 91560 SEC to a guy in Chicago for 3500 Guy jumped all over it. Then he calls Tim back. Oh, I cannot restore this car. You want, you want it back for $3,500. I'm improvising his accent, but... You know, he just gave up. I don't know why all the people involved in restoring Mercedes are so, so chicken shit. You have guys that are restoring BMWs that'll restore a car that's, you know, a, a 76 automatic 2002. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I just had a $40,000 worth of metal work done. Then you have guys that are like, oh, yeah, I have the, the right front fender and the A-pillar with the VIN number on it of a Porsche 356, $200,000 restoration in Germany right now. Why is it nobody does this with Mercedes? I know they do it with Pagoda SLs. Why don't they do it with SECs? Why don't they do it with 123 Coupes? Why don't they do it with 107s? Why not? It's because they made too many? Well, I don't think so because they're not making anymore. You know, and then that opens the door for all these people that want to modify stuff. I mean, this is the this is basically the garbage that the maggots that do LS swaps and wide body conversions feed off of the fact that there's so many inexpensive cars that are like almost there, you know? And now we have this thing where all of you are spoiled babies and you're like, you want to go and bring a trailer and buy a perfect car. No, I don't want to do any work. Oh, it needs a wheel change. Oh, I don't want to pay the money. Oh, and what else does it need? Oh my gosh, it's got a salvage title. It must be ready to explode. You know, sorry, bring a trailer, but I'm just going to keep making fun of you. I could go all day. In fact, if you guys want to see 30 minutes of me making fun of bring a trailer vitters, let me know in the comments below and Thomas will arrange it. I will make a 30 minute video. If I could get 5,000 subscribers in the next month, let's do this. I will make a 30 minute video of me making fun of bring a trailer video uh, buyers. I will. Anyway. All right. So if it's done, if it's an SEC wide body conversion that's done today, it's worthless. That's all I'm saying. You know, you, you actually are taking away the value of the car. Let's talk in the future. I will see you guys. Thanks for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Get me to 50,000 subscribers, please. What the heck? You know, people will pay $300,000 for a junk wide body clone that was done in a week and a half, you know, and then painted over the course of another week and a half. They, I, I, and I can't get 50,000 subscribers. Why? Because I'm not pandering to a bunch of ninnies who like visual effects, you know? I don't know. I'm not into one of those car, I'm not one of those car porn people, so you're not gonna catch me there. But um, please like, share, and subscribe, and get me to 50,000 subscribers. And, you know, I think I, I think, I think there are more than a few people that, that share this mindset. See you guys in the future. Let me know if you want the bring a trailer video. Thanks, bye.